Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our main event of the evening, live from London's Wembley Arena. Would you please welcome firstly making their way to the ring from Kilburn in London, Ashley Tracia. Away we go for 12 rounds, and it could be 12 rounds as well. Only 16 knockouts between these two boxes. You know, I'm, I'm up there with like the likes of David Hay and Carl Crotch. The only thing what that they have done, what I haven't done, is win a world title. I boxed in America, and I've beaten some, you know, world like world ranked boxers. So I think you know I'm doing well. I'm just on the fringe of doing some great things. I'm a, I've got every license I think that you can have. I'm a trainer, a manager a promoter, a matchmaker, an agent. Uh, for the past three years I've been running Hatton TV. Before that I worked for both BBC and ITV, including Radio 5 Live and Radio 4. Um, I've football commentated uh, on the TV, I've uh, commentated on boxing and all sports really. I've covered Olympic Games and Commonwealth Games as well, so um, an all-rounder I suppose. I'm still a full-time fireman and I don't think I'll ever make a professional boxer, but you know, the message that we're trying to get out um, and helping people and, and it's what it's all about and I think boxing can be a fantastic tool for that. I got involved in boxing when I was four or five years old. I used to watch boxing with my father and, um, you know, I just kind of enjoyed it, like watching Mike Tyson, the Sugar Ray Leonard's Marvin Heikler. And I, I asked him if I could come to a boxing gym. At first I, was, I wasn't allowed but my parents let, let me come down to All Stars Boxing Club a few years later. And if, I've been coming here ever since. I've been coming here for 24 years now. So um, I obviously love this crazy sport. Beginning of 2000, 2001, um, I linked up with Jane Couch, the uh, women's world champion. She's based in Bristol, as I am as well. And I started helping her out with her PR. And uh, so that's how I really got dragged into the sport I suppose and, and actually one one night when I was one of uh, one of Jane's shows that she was promoting the Master of Ceremonies didn't turn up so she said oh Nigel you, you're used to being on a microphone so she got me to do that and um, that's really then uh, how I sort of carried on being involved in boxing so I, I was actually up in the ring and that gave me a you know big buzz really I really I really enjoyed doing that and then from that I made lots of contacts and got more deeply involved. 15 years ago or so I'd always wanted to box when I was a kid but <laughs> my mum and dad would never let me so um, I don't know how it happened I just found a, a club near where I lived approached them and just started training I've always been involved in sport and um, and uh, got involved there learned all the basics and uh, just been taking it taking it uh, further ever since it's one of the best things I've ever done. I was quite young actually. I, I wasn't always in punch ups at school, but I had a fair few. I felt quite at home actually when I was fighting. You know, I sort of felt because I thought lots of things in life, you know, it's all um, can be a bit unfair against you. And, uh, especially in the boxing ring, there's just two of you, you know. So, like kids that had their mum and dad still living together, and my dad had gone. And uh, it's not very really nice, but I used to think, like, you know. Uh, you know, your dad uh, is still here and he's taking you to boxing and mine isn't, so I have some of this sort of <laughs> He wants the respect of his peers over here because he says he gets it in the USA. Oh, a decent trading there He'd get it in the centre of the ring. He'd get it tonight if he beats Lenny Dills for the British title, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, went in big there. There have been people who've said that you know it, it should be banned because it promotes violence outside the ring. But actually, I think the opposite is the case. I really, I really do. I, I think my opinion's changed a lot in the last five, six years, maybe along those lines, just from meeting the boxers and talking to them. Um, I, I, I won't list the, name them now, but I can you know list a number of uh, boxers, professional boxers, who've had extremely dodgy upbringings and dodgy, you know. Uh, childhood teenage years and have ended up in um, in trouble with the with the law being been in, in prison and boxing has genuinely turned their lives around there's you know really really nice people I don't see that as violence even if one guy knocks the other one out I don't see that as violent I see that as 
something that happens in, in our, our sport. You know, um, if, for example, one boxer was to knock another one out and then kick him when he was on the floor, that to me, that's violent. And that's not part of boxing. We have rules, we have a structure. We respect each other before the fight and we respect each other throughout and afterwards. Boxing's really helped me to understand myself in, in lots of ways. Um, you need a lot of discipline. It's, it's a lot of hard work. Um, things don't always go the way you'd like them to go. And you need to learn to overcome them. And you have to, otherwise uh, you get hit. Um, so the fitness, uh, all the technical skills that you need to learn, um, all these things are really applicable in everyday life. Unboxing has opened, opened up a lot of doors for me. I was a spoon, spoon fed. I've come from you know, a place in London where there's a lot of crime, there's not a lot of opportunities, but through hard work, you know, I've, I've come very far. You know, a little kid that's got nothing, not a penny to his name, lives in a council estate. In a boxing arena, he can be like the king of the world. And that's what, you know, I think it can, um, it can be really beautiful. I think it, it is a way of channeling aggression and stopping some of those problems. And, and particularly, I, uh, again, I've covered a number of projects where um, youngsters, they've opened a boxing gym and youngsters have gone along and now local councils are supporting them because they see it as a way of getting them off the street and giving them something to focus on in, the, in their lives. And, and, and I do think boxing can be a force for good like that. And, and whereas the, as perhaps you might call them, the, the, the do-good is managed in the 80s, I suppose, the late 70s, 80s and early 90s to get boxing banned at schools, I think it's quite significant now that the, uh, the education authorities in a lot of parts of, of the UK are beginning to encourage boxing again now because they suddenly see actually it's probably a force for good so I, you know that's that's changed a lot now I think they're making a lot of progress in that. I think you know it, it's good to learn how to eat healthy you know to to structure your life as well give like like focus and stuff and I think I would recommend like boxing as a sport a keep fit you know for all kids it should be in schools. His eyes look focused and full of energy and full of vitality and life and oh Dawes takes another crisp left there his eyes just look like they're in the wilderness somewhere yeah they were, they were a little bit glazed his eyes still there still jabbing still... that boxing came into my life was a time when I desperately needed something to uh, invest my effort my energy my time my resources into um, if I hadn't have come across board boxing I don't I wouldn't like to think what I would have ended up doing. There's many virtues to boxing, um, getting people involved, helping them out with their fitness, especially with the youngsters, getting them to a great club um, where those values uh, are taught and instilled. What, what surprises me is actually they don't make it more accessible, boxing, because for the amount of kids it takes off the streets and the amount of people that have got all that energy that will go around causing aggravation if they've got nothing to do. To set up a boxing gym costs nothing. In, if you drive through London, you can't go through a street hardly without finding an empty building. There's always places that are to rent, to let that are empty. And some of them, for years, stay empty. I just think, why don't the government just get that by the scruff of the neck, do some sort of scheme where you know they, they can set up gym. A boxing gym costs peanuts to, to set up. To never give up on your dreams to work to make it reality. That's what I would say, because, you know, a dream is a dream until you work towards making it real, and dreams do come true. It was a long, long time in the waiting and the making, and maybe Ashley Theophane would have had his chance sooner if he hadn't thought so much in America.